is accomplished then we can protect from the further degradation the case study of the yellowstone ecosystem uh, in which the reintroduction of the wolves okay, walls that uh, yellow uh, stone ecosystem is presented as a case study it illustrated a very uh, good example of the importance of introducing the key species to restore the ecological balance because here uh, the wolves are considered as the key species so key species is that if that particular species from the ecosystem is eliminated then the whole ecosystem will be destroyed Okay, so some more examples are there. So restoration measures the uh, restoration me uh, measures basically it includes the identification and eliminate the causes, then reintroduction of the key species, especially the pioneer keystone and the foundation species. So these three different species they need to be reintroduced for uh, the ecological restoration and once they are introduced so it will be restored from the further degradation so as we can see in this diagram that uh, it is a large green uh, ecosystem is there okay in the first one and by the activity of the deforestation industrial activities overgrazing so loss of uh, biodiversity now we can say there is a barren ecosystem there is no life no green nothing is there so it is a bad, a bad land management which is responsible which leads to the drought soil erosion and desertification so we uh, now what happened we have to restore it so the ecosystem restoration which can restore the soil the water cycle and the, it reverses the desertification so once it uh, uh, so how we can store so we must uh, first find out the causes so after finding the causes uh, the soil restoration practices is there the replanting of uh, plant uh, then it converted to the intact ecosystem and after the introduction of some uh, key species or pioneer species so its sustainable livelihood is there and thus it revert the climate change so this is how the ecological uh, eco or we can say the ecosystem restoration takes place the red list category so these are the red list categories which are given by the iucn so it defines the extinction uh, risk of the species which is assessed and the nine categories are extended from the um, not evaluated uh, to the extent or we can say least concern to the extent so nine species are there okay uh, so so extinct are basically those which are uh, uh, at presently are not available and they have died means no particular um, the no gene pool also available so that species are considered as the extinct extinct in the wild are only to survive in the captivity or cultivation or some well outside its natural range critical endangered species they are facing the extremely high risk of the extinction that is why they are coming under the threatened category the endangered species they are facing uh, a high risk of the extinction in the wild similarly vulnerable they are facing the high risk of extinction in the wild then the near threatened or close to the qualifying or likely to qualify for the threatened category in the near future and the least concern that the population is stable so uh, there is no concern of of that particular species and that is unlikely to face extension in the near future the data deficiency means the proper data is not there that how much abundance is of that particular species or distributions to uh, estimate at risk of the extension so that a particular uh, red list category we can say so first we'll discuss about the extinct uh, species so extinction is basically it is a process of the evolution that lead to the disappearance of the population or the species so during the course of the evolution that particular species has been extinct and now there is uh, no source or we can say uh, the entire genetic heritage is also lost and the species uh, uh, evolve in response to the environmental changes 
or some alteration in the genetic makeup. Okay. And the extinction is strat statistic basically almost 99% of all the species that once existed on the earth, approximately 5 million species, they are estimated to be extinct. And some uh, are uh, uh, extincted due to the natural causes uh, like the climate changes there, the human activity like over hunting or the uh, habitat destruction. So, these are the possible region for the extinction we can say and some examples of the extinction species are listed here like the passenger pigeon dodo tasmanian tiger okay that uh Baiji, white dolphin so all these other species which are now being extinct from this country Next is the uh, critical endangered species and according to the IUCN uh, the critical endangered species, uh, there are 132 species of the plant and animal in the India. The critical endangered means they are uh, at the risk of the endangered uh, or they are uh, high risk of extinction is possible. So, they are the different list of the critical endangered fish as well as of the bird, the mammal and also of the reptile which are listed under the critically endangered uh, species. Next is the endangered species. So, endangered species of India according to the IUCN it accounts for 7 to 8 percent of all the recorded species but with the rapid loss of the biodiversity many species are becoming extinct uh, or at the risk of becoming critically endangered so the species that are at the risk of the extinction uh, due to the sudden decrease in their population and habitat they are known as the endangered species and uh, example of some endangered animal species, it includes the Royal Bengal Tiger, the Asian Asiatic Lion, Snow Leopard, Nail uh, Giri Tahir, the Indian Rhino. Some plant species, Ebony Tree, Indian Mallow, Malabar Lily, Assam cat, uh, Catkin Yew and the Milkwort. So, these are some endangered plant species. So, basically these are the... Um, India map is showing the endangered species from across the uh, uh, different states of the India. So, like the hog is there, okay, which is of the Assam, endangered species of the Assam, the leopard car, cat is there, foothills of the Himalaya, Bengal tiger is there from the mangroves of the Sundarban, West uh, Sundarbans or the West Bengal. So, these all are the different. Uh, endangered species of India. Some threatened species is also there. So, uh, threatened species conservation uh, program basically include all these different species which are at a very high risk of the endanger, uh, endangerment in the wild and also they are known as the vulnerable species. Okay. Let's discuss some questions. So, question is that uh, in the IUCN red list 2004, what does the red represent? So, the red basically it refers to the taxa only which are at a very high risk of extinctions. Okay. So, red is basically represent the taxa and the red book we or the red data book we all know what it is. So, it is a collection or we can say it is a collection of the record or data of the species with the risk of the extinctions maintained by the IUCN. Next question is how can the loss of one species lead to the extinction of the another? So, the phenomena is known here is the co-extinction. Okay, so the co-extinction is a phenomena in which what happened, the two mutually interrelated species, uh, the extinction is possible. Okay, like if two species are there which are mutually inter uh, interrelated species, so if the one species is extincted, so it is but obvious or it is natural that the second species will also extinct in the near future. 
near future. For example, the extinction of the host fish is there. Okay, the host fish is now extincted from the particular habitat. So the extinction of the parasite, which are basically uh, situated or which are located on the particular host fish, they will also get uh, extincted. So in this way, the both the species get extinct. Next question is, species diversity of the plant is much less than that of the animal. Why? Because the species diversity, uh, why it is less? Obviously, the plant, uh, they do not have the nervous system in them, which is uh, uh, which usually work in a controlled and a coordinated manner to control the various activities like in the animal. So, uh, they also possess some receptor to receive the environmental stimuli. Some of these responses are adaptive and ensure that the survival of organism in the changing environmental condition. So, all these factors make the species diversity of plant uh, is less while compared to that of the animal.